Our students, so today we are in fact going to speak about meanders, which do possess a winding or somewhat of a snake-like characteristic. All right, these are associated with middle course of a river. Now, this is in fact an aerial view. And when I'm saying aerial view, this is a view from above. For example, if you're in a helicopter or a plane or some elevated section, you can simply view this from that particular altitude. Right, looking down upon this uh, particular feature. All right. Now um, we know for sure meanders have very distinctive bends. All right, and these distinctive bends can either be considered to be the outer bend, or they can either have inner bends. For example, this region here is the outer bend, and directly opposite that there is the inner bend on this side. To actually give you a better understanding of it all, this here is in fact referred to the outer bend. The outer bend is actually termed as the concave bend or the concave bank of a meander. All right, we will talk about the characteristics in a couple of minutes. Um, apart from the concave or the outer bend, we also have the convex or the inner bend of a meander. All right, so students, we have a winding or a side-to-side -side river channel. As you can see, this is in fact an aerial view. It's a little diagram I have here. Um, on this end, this is the concave bend, all right? And directly opposite, we have the convex bend. Okay, now students, this is in fact referring to the general flow of water can actually be, well, basically downwards. Let us utilize the diagram here to focus on the flow of the water moving down. But we should bear in mind that this region here, this region, which is on a concave bank, it would in fact be associated with a great degree of erosion. Now, students, we have a great degree of erosion which will contribute to undercutting of the channel on this side, which is on the concave bank. If we have a great degree of erosion, that means the velocity would be great as well. All right, we have high velocity associated with the concave bank. In addition to this, if you have undercutting taking place, all right, on the concave bend, we should bear in mind that the volume of water would be greater, of course, because you will have a deeper, right, body of water. Okay, so keep that in mind for me, please. So we know erosion is dominant, right? The force of the water will be great, all right, greater in comparison. And there will also be a greater body of water because of the fact that the, this area here, the concave bank, is said to be deeper because of undercutting taking place. All right? Whereas on the convex bank, you actually have the opposite. All right? You have sediments accumulating here. Why? Because the, there is a slower flow of water. So everybody here, right, dear students. Apart from the slower flow of water, we would have deposition is dominant, all right? And also, if deposition is dominant, the water will set to be relatively shallow, or I should say shallower, all right? The water would be, the, the area there would be shallower in nature, all right? So on this side, on the convex bend, we have deposition, which is dominant, Right, slower flow of water and also shallower bodies of water. So, class, we can automatically see that in a meandering river pattern, we have both erosion, right, as well as deposition taking place. All right, erosion is associated with the concave bend, the concave bank of a meander, whereas deposition will be associated with the convex bank of a meander. Now, we should always bear in mind, this is an aerial view. This is a view from above. But let us look at a view that we, a cross-sectional view rather, which will give a better understanding in terms of how the water will be, what are some of the features that can actually be found in a meandering river pattern, specifically referring to the concave and the convex bank. All right? All right, students, let us look at the cross-sectional view of a meander. And when I'm talking about a cross-sectional view, 
we are in fact assuming that uh like you know you can actually jump into the water whatever the case may be assuming this is you <laughs> all right and what happened is that um we can see obviously concave bank is in fact associated with a greater depth all right that means there's a greater volume of water all right so we have fast flow as we indicated in the previous point a faster flow greater depth and the energy is great so erosion is dominant now this area here, why does this area have this kind of characteristic, right? Because there is what? Undercutting taking place, all right? And again, I'm sorry about the handwriting, you all. Undercutting taking place. What I'm saying here is that the force of the water, the velocity of the water, all right? All the sediments that is actually taken up from the, that is actually found in the river channel will be directed upon this side. All right, because the force of the water is great, the velocity of the water is great, and you have a lot of bombarding sediments. And this will contribute to erosion, which is very much dominant. And this area here was in, is, in fact, undercut. All right? Now, on the convex bank, the convex bank is a little bit unique. All right? The convex bank is associated with deposition of materials. All right? This side is associated with more deposition of materials. All right, um, I mean, fully well, this flow of water is slower on this side. All right, now, class, if we say deposition is dominant, that means, right, the, this area here will be associated with much more, a greater degree of stability. All right, so this region on the concave bank, all right, which is here, is unstable, whereas on the convex bank, it is said to be relatively stable all right i should write that in quickly the concave bank is associated with what unstable all right characteristics whereas the convex bank is associated with stable characteristics all right now if i'm a fisherman i will try my best if i'm going fishing i'm going to throw a line or whatever the case may be to catch some fish as soon as some fish some inside the water with the case may be i will so, you know, relax in a rock or whatever the case may be here, all right? I will try to throw my line, right, you know, in this particular region because I can actually stand here, I can rest my cooler here, whatever the case may be. I mean, I'm going to do far with this, but the fact of the matter is that I am stable. But if I'm standing on this side, because of undercutting taking place, this area is said to be very unstable. This piece of rock can potentially be fractured. And potentially be dropped into the rocks and into the uh the seabed, the riverbed, my bad. Into the riverbed. All right. Now there the are in fact unique features associated with these areas. This area here is said to be known as a river cliff, also known as a river bluff. Now, river cliffs or river bluffs are associated with the unstable side of a meander, which is technically referring to the concave bend or the concave bank of a meander, um, which is associated with undercutting of the lower end because of great volume and also fast moving bodies of water, which obviously will contribute to erosion. Whereas on this side, the other side now, we are in fact, this area, this feature here, right, is known as a slip off slope. All right, it is called a slip off slope. All right, and a slip off slope is associated with deposition of materials, primarily because there is no undercutting taking place. There is a slower body of water here. There's a shallower body of water here, which would in fact contribute to materials accumulating, like alluvium, sand, silt, you name it. All right, below the water level, all right, we have materials which may also accumulate, and this is actually this can actually develop, all right, to what we call a point bar. So point bars are associated with the convex bend of a meander, primarily referring to that depositional feature below the water level. All right, so we can automatically understand that the convex bank of a meander is associated with slip off slopes and point bars all right which is here 
whereas the concave bend of a meander is associated with river cliffs, also termed as river bluffs. All right, so let's move beyond the, you know, kind of untidy diagram there we had a couple minutes ago. Um, look at this particular diagram when you look at the screen. Now, this view, all right, can actually show us the slip of slope where the sediments can actually deposit, all right, which my cursor is on right now. And directly opposite that, we have the river cliff. Look how unstable it is because we have undercutting taking place. Um, now, class, I want to pay very, very close attention to this particular line. There is a line of fastest flow. And this line of fastest flow is critically referring to that area where you have the deepest body of water, which is actually running along the concave bank, all right? even on alternating sides, right? For example, the concave bank is here in this upper part of the meander. As you move further down slope or downstream, the concave bank will be on this side, all right? And as you move further downstream again, the concave bank will be on this side. So class, what do we understand? The concave bank is associated with the deeper body, which is also deeper body of water, which is also associated with the fastest flow of water, all right? There's a term for this. That particular term is known as the Thalweg. The Thalweg is in fact the line, all right, of fastest flow of water, all right, which exists, which exists basically in a meandering pathway or within a river channel. Okay. All right, students. So I hope this video is actually helpful. All right. Um, if you are in fact any questions, you can let me know. There's no problem at all. Um, there is also another thing I would like to refer to and speak about that is very critically related to um uh meandering river patterns and that is what you call oxbow leaks i will leave that for another a different video another video altogether primarily because of the fact that oxbow leaks are it would in fact take a significant amount of time to explain right but before we jump even jump to that focus upon the main things that are associated with the meandering river patterns so any questions feel free to let me know all right i hope you all um, actually understand and grasp the main context associated with it just me sure all right, for the CXC examinations and sometimes even for KEEP, all right, um, it is very much important that you learn to draw these diagrams because once you can draw these diagrams, annotate these particular diagrams, even from a aerial view, even from a, a cross-sectional view, all right, once you can get a better appreciation of that, all right, you will be able to answer the questions much more um, specifically with well, more confidence Right, because diagrams will help you in terms of better understanding the notes. All right. Okay, students, we'll keep good. Bye.